Hey guys, I'm Man UK here. Hope everyone's doing well. Today's video, I'm going to be covering the topic how to raise an ant colony. We're going to be starting off from the very beginning of making a test tube setup, catching your queen, your queen laying her first eggs, waiting a couple of months until your first workers emerge, and then moving them into a farm aquarium after you have 20 to 30 workers. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Please stay tuned for this exciting episode of Ant Man UK. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thank you. So guys, you're wondering how to raise a successful ant colony and maybe you're new to ant keeping and this is the perfect guide for you. The first thing that you're going to need to raise a successful ant colony is a queen ant. Without the reproduction of workers, the colony will fail. But before we get on to that, first of all, we've got to make ourselves a test tube setup so we can catch a queen ant in the wild. The first thing we're going to have to do before we catch a queen ant is create a home for her. Now the perfect nesting area for her is a test tube setup. The test tube setup allows the queen to feed on water and also the humidity helps with the egg reproduction. It also makes your queen feel safe and secure due to the small area between the two pieces of cotton. You can buy test tube setups on Amazon and eBay in bulk for like 100 of them for around £15. Before we do anything else, I'm going to cover over how you actually make the test tube setup. So guys, we're going to need a few things to create our test tube setup. We're going to need some cotton wool, some test tubes, some water from the tap or spring water, some q-tips also known as cotton buds in the UK to make the test tube setup. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is pour roughly around three quarters of water into the test tube. Once we have finished filling up the test tube we're going to get the cotton ball and make it into like a round ball and what we do with this is we put it into the top of the test tube and then we get the q-tip that you seen before in the footage and we use the q-tip to push the cotton wool into the water now this helps to soak up the water and it will give the queen something to drink and feed on we also use the q-tip to clean up any excess water that may have overflown the cotton wool so the queen does not drown we just double check it i use both sides of the q-tip just to make sure and ensure that there's no water that the queen could possibly get stuck on or drown in and then i get another piece of cotton wool but you want to make this a nice snug fit you don't want it too tight to seal the test tube or there'll be no air getting into the setup so then we seal off our test tube setup and we're ready to go and catch our first queen ant the best way to find a queen ant for your colony is to wait for the nuptial flights in your area or your country. Most of this information can be found just by searching Google for like ant species in the UK or nuptial flights UK or nuptial flights America or nuptial flights Europe. Trying to find your native species and finding out the nuptial flight dates will tell you the best time it is to go looking for queen ants and when they've just made it. This is the perfect time to start an ant colony and to catch your first queen ant. This is some footage that I taken last summer, I think it was like July, August time, when the nuptial flights for Lacius Niger were happening around the UK. Now at the time, I was in work all day when it was happening, and I was really, really stressing because I was thinking to myself, there's hundreds of queens here and I can't catch them because I'm in work. But when I got home, I chipped in my garden and there was a queen on this blue box in my garden and I got so excited. So what you're going to want to do here guys, is you're going to get your test tube set up, take out the cotton wool, put it behind the queen and put the test tube in front of the queen and just give her a slight little nudge and she'll soon go running into the test tube set up. Congratulations guys, you've just caught your first queen ant and you're ready to start your ant colony. Once you've got your first queen ant, it is important that you keep her stored in a cool dry place, somewhere dark preferably, she'll love the dark. As you can see in the video footage, there is a mite in this test tube setup, which I later killed off with a Q-tip, cotton bud, and removed it from the nest. Once you store the queen in a dark place, she'll feel more comfortable and begin to lay eggs. 
Now sometimes egg laying can happen just after a few days of capturing the queen or maybe a few weeks or maybe a couple of months. Sometimes you could have had a queen for a few weeks, maybe a few months and she's not laid any eggs. This can be down to a number of factors. First being she could be feeling stressed. Second, she could be feeling vibrations from where you're keeping her. So it's, it's stressing her out as well. And third, it's getting near the end of the year, temperatures are getting cold, and she's more than likely going to hibernate. I've had this happen before with Alasius Niger Queen. She hibernated, and then after hibernation season, as soon as it came to March, she laid a big batch of eggs. So it's been a few days, or it's been a few weeks, or it's been quite some time. Maybe your queen hibernated during the winter, and it's March, and you've decided to check up on your queen ant to see how she's doing, and you've found out that she's laid some eggs. Now this is absolutely fantastic, because now she's reproducing eggs. It's basically the foundation and the actual starting point of raising your ant colony. Once she's produced eggs, they'll soon change into larvae, pupae, and then your first workers will emerge after a couple of weeks. Once your first workers emerged, you're going to have to start providing the colony with food. So after waiting for weeks and months, finally your first worker ants have emerged. Now the, first, the worker ants are going to be vital for the colony survival. The workers are going to go out looking for food to feed the queen and to feed the larvae. They will also protect the colony from any other threats but seeing as we're keeping them I'm pretty sure they're not going to come over or come across any other ant species. What you want to do is provide them with some food. Food such as sugar water which is sugar mixed with water into a syrup is perfect honey and some protein. Now protein is pretty easy to buy. You can go to the pet store, buy some mealworms, some small crickets and these provide a great source of protein. When you do get insects please kill them before you give them to the ants or as you could risk losing a lot of ants if they have to take down a live insect. The quickest way to kill an insect is either to get some pliers or tweezers and crush its head or chuck it in some boiling water and it'll be instantly killed. Don't fear when you feed your ants and see the insect still twitching. This is usually due to the nerves in the insect's body. Now that you're feeding your ant colony, it's going to start to grow really quickly. Once the colony has matured in the test tube setup, you'll have roughly around 20 to 30 workers. Obviously they're going to have more of a higher demand for food and more water. Now at this time it is crucial that you start to move the ants into a ant farm or a farmacarium or a natural setup. Here in the video you can see my paladula colony that are currently living in an acrylic farmacarium which is perfect because I can see the ants it has its own humidity and hydration sy system and it's got its own outworld built onto the top which is really easy to feed these ants. Now because they're being fed so much now and they got lots of supplies they're starting to reproduce really quickly and the colony is growing beyond my expectations. A few months ago I think there was only about 40 workers in this colony and now looking at it today I think there's maybe 60 to 80 workers. So he's growing really, really quickly. I'll put some footage in the video showing you me moving a Mesobarbarus colony into one of the acrylic formicurians. So eventually guys, your test tube setup will probably look a bit like this, but I let this go on for a bit too long before I purchased them a home. This is the Mesobarbarus species. They're a harvester ant and they love seeds and breaking it down into bread. So I got myself an acrylic pharmacarium. You can find these at my website, antkeeping.co.uk. And I decided it was time to move in the colony. I took the lid off the outworld, placed the test tube in, carefully removed the cotton wool, and placed the lid 
straight back on the Pharmacarium because we don't want ants running around everywhere. The great thing about this Pharmacarium is it's got an expansion port at the bottom which means later when the colony grows too big I can connect up another Pharmacarium to the setup so they can keep expanding. Upon opening the test tube the workers started to get a little excited and started to move around exploring their new home. So as some of the workers from the test tube setup were in exploring the full Pharmacarium setup, some of the workers decided that it was a great idea to start dumping any rubbish and litter that was inside of the test tube which would be dead ants, leftover bits of food outside into the outworld. Now the ants do this because any leftover food can break out into mold which then can upset the colony and sometimes at worst case scenario kill the entire colony so the majority of workers removed any of the mess that was left in the test tube. Now that the news was getting back to the test tube and the queen and all the other workers uh, the workers began getting very very excited as you can see here in the video footage. In this type of colony with this type of species Mesobarbarius contains minor majors and super majors. You can see these because they look absolutely massive and they have a big head, big claws. These are great ants for defending this type of species against other ant colonies. Now that you've got your ants moving into your pharmacarium setup guys, you're pretty much on your way to raising a brilliant and successful ant colony. All you have to do is keep providing the right source of food, water and humidity and you'll have yourself a successful ant colony. I hope this guide has been helpful for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below and good luck on your ant keeping journey. Thanks for watching. I'm on UK.